Hello and welcome to a new paint with me process video. Um, I'm going to be painting my grandmother's garden and here's a quick little time lapse of how I prepare for my paintings. <laughs> um, so in Procreate I trace over um, a photo. So this that was a photo, a very old photo of my grandma's garden um, and I just did the line work and now you see me um, I'm going to trace that using my iPad as a light box onto a sheet of um, hot pressed 100% cotton paper. It's a five by seven sheet. Um, and you'll see <laughs> my luck with color pencils continues. Um, I'm using a green um, Prismacolor Cull Erase pencil here for the line work. Um, I don't know if this is technically considered cheating, but when I want my line work to be precise, this is how I do it. I use my iPad as a light box. Sue me. <laughs> Today I'm using Liquitex acrylic ink um, as my base and I have a set of six. I have a set of five and then I just bought a green. <laughs> so I have um, like the primary set, which includes a, a burnt umber um, and a black and a white and a red and a yellow and a blue. <laughs> and I just bought a transparent sap green, um, which makes really, really nice greens. You'll also see that I was using, um, I will be using the Prismacolor Premier Color Pencils and also my limited set of Neocolor 2s, um, which are a water soluble wax pastel from Caran d'Ache. Uh, the acrylic inks come in these little bottles that have, is it a pipette, um, where you just squeeze out the paint um, and a little bit um, of the color goes a very long way, especially when you're mixing it with white. Um, <laughs> you'll see, uh, you'll see how bold the color is, but the sky in this photo is very muted. Um, actually all the colors in this photo are muted. Um, so you'll see. Anyway, I'm just using ch some cheap um, Artify brushes here. That's what I'm showing you there. <laughs> um, and I, I switch on and off between the two depending on uh, on the needs of the painting. Um, in a second, we're going to speed up to 1000%. Um, it'll be sped up for the majority of the video. But there's going to be times where I um, bring it back down if I want to show something <laughs> in particular. Um, but yeah, so this is, um, <clears throat> this is a painting that took me, I want to say an hour and a half altogether from start to finish. Um, and this is kind of in comparison to my last um, paint with me process video that I put out last week, which I'll link um, here for you and below. I wasn't happy with how that one came out and I think I realized why <laughs> um, and it might like it, it's pretty obvious when I think about it but like <clears throat> sorry, taking the time to do it right makes for a better painting <laughs> like taking the time here to fully cover the background um, and I fill in the whole canvas um, paper here before I go in with the colored pencils and I'm definitely more precise than I was with my gouache in the last one. And the acrylic ink is also much um, more saturated than my really watery dried gouache on my paint palette. So I think for these paintings, if and when I use gouache, which I will, I will be using gouache because um, I love it, <laughs> uh, I need just to use fresh gouache. Like suck it up Melissa and just use new <laughs> paint from the tube that save some maybe if you want to but you're allowed I'm giving you permission I'm giving myself permission <laughs> to use fresh gouache okay but I also really love the effect of the acrylic ink and I think it adds such vibrancy underneath um, the pencils and neo colors as a background and the colors um, that you can get like they're just so nicely saturated which like I, I don't know about you but I really I really like using acrylic ink I kind of bought them on a whim I don't even know who I saw using them 
It must have been somebody. It was probably Sandy Hester, let's be honest. <laughs> um, but she uses them in a totally different way. But it took me it took me a little bit after getting them to actually realize how I want to use them. And this this right here, what you're watching right now, is exactly how I want to use them. Um, I want to use them as a base layer for paintings, be it landscape or <clears throat> otherwise. They're also really nice just to like fill in big shapes, like on paper, kind of similar to how I would use a Posca marker, um, but a little more texture texture than a Posca marker gives. Um, what else do I have to say? <laughs> I love acrylic ink. Um, I'm very happy with my color selection. I don't think I need any more. I know I'm going to have to refill my white before too long because I think I'm already halfway through the bottle, which compared to the other colors, it doesn't even look like I've used any of them. <laughs> so, um, yes, white will be the first on my replenish list. But aside from that, now that I have my new um, green, sap green, which I was fine just mixing the yellow and the blue, um, but the sap green just makes it that much easier <laughs> to get nice greens and adding in a little bit of that burnt umber, um, and a little bit of red just to like <clears throat> dirty up the green. Y'all know I should, you, you all should know that I love a dirty green. <laughs> um, although this painting is, doesn't have very much of that. Anyway, <laughs> that's my love of acrylic ink. Um, and here I'm just kind of filling in any last minute blank white spots um, just to make sure that everything is fully filled in. And now comes uh, the colored pencils. In my last video, I mentioned um, I was on the hunt for new greens and other something other than Prismacolor. <laughs> and you'll see there, I bought another Prismacolor. Um, I, I bought a color called Artichoke. And it's like this dirty yellow green color it's beautiful it's not dark <laughs> it's definitely not dark um but it's very nice and I'm very happy to add it to my everyday green yellow selection I also got two I think what, what are they uh is it Faber Castell pit pastels I'll have to look it up <laughs> I'll put them in, in the description below, but they are definitely pit pastels. I have no idea what they are, um, what their like, what their purpose is. But when I tried them um, at the art store, and I just started to scribble, I got a Payne's gray, and maybe like a chromium oxide green, something like that, some sort of green, like a olive green. Maybe it's an olive green. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, rewind the video if you want to know for sure <laughs> um, but I will list them in the in the description below um, oh there's the green I can't read that and for whatever reason I'm telling you that it's real time we're in real time right now <laughs> but you can see how nice and like not thick but like opaque the, the these like pit pastels go down um, it's very satisfying they work over the acrylic ink but they don't work over the prismacolor which I think is a little bit strange <laughs> I was surprised when I was using them yesterday um, on a painting that I made the same process using acrylic ink as a as a as a base layer um, I was really surprised when they weren't going over um, when they weren't going over the prismacolor if anybody knows <laughs> why that is maybe Prismacolor has oil in these um don't work over that I don't know or wax or something but acrylic ink is pretty waxy anyway they're fun but I didn't satisfy my itch for a dark dirty green <laughs> colored pencil so please if you have specific color specific brands that you think will work for me I need something darker than like the dark green Prismacolor <laughs> um, in the meantime, I'll continue using my indigo blue that seems to work fine. Um, we are coming toward the end of this video. Um, and I haven't talked anything about my grandma and her illustrious, wonderful, epic, 
garden. <laughs> um, yeah, her garden was the place to be. It like whenever we would go over there, we would always play in and around um, her garden. <clears throat> she let us get our hands dirty in the garden. Every year she would plant pumpkins for each of the grandkids and we would carve our names in like the baby pumpkins. And then when they grew bigger, <laughs> our name would be huge stretched across the pumpkins, which is <clears throat> was like really, really cool. Um, and yeah, my grandma is my like model for life, <laughs> even though I will never be a grandmother. Just the way that she cared for people and just her kindness in her everyday life and everything. Um, yeah. I, I, I want to be Grandma Martin when I grow up. <laughs> that's, that's, that's who I strive to be. Um, anyway, here's a tape peel for you. And <laughs> when I slow it down to real time, which you see here, it like feels like slow motion, but this is real time because this tape is way too sticky for paper. Uh, I need to get some proper, like, I don't know, paper tape. <laughs> Uh, I have ripped paper before. Anyway, here is my messy desk, <laughs> the aftermath um, of the painting, and then some nice juicy close-ups of the texture, which I hope come through. Oh, sorry, M my inks first. <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely learned a lesson after last week's video and this week's video in that I need a solid base before I go in with the texture and I also need to spend time on the texture and not rush it. Um, having the time to just sit and look and then realize what's missing and um, yeah, I like this. I painted my grandma's garden a few times and they never disappoint. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.